Hey everybody, I'm Suzanne, and as you can see, I'm actually painting from home today. I, uh, we had a little bit of snow, and it just kinda, just enough snow to make it fun and interesting, and I opted to stay home today to paint. So, what I'm doing is, was inspired basically by color. Sometimes my subject matter that I pick is based solely on color, and I really felt like I wanted to paint in pinks. Now, what animal can you even think of that might have a lot of pink in it? Uh, if you said a, a pig, then you were right. And I am going to paint a little pile of piglets. Um, and this is somewhat, I don't want to call it an abstraction, but it's, it doesn't have any one pig in its entirety. So you're going to see little butts of pigs and faces of pigs and elbows of pigs and just pigs. But I think you're going to get the gist real quick. So again, that's what we're going to paint today. So sit back, get ready to have some piggy fun, and we're going to get into painting. Uh, if you are my subscribers, as always, thank you so much. And if you're not, please consider subscribing. And uh, let's go ahead and jump into this little pile of pigs. Here's today's palette for our little piggies. I've got um, a cadmium red medium. I have magenta. I have purple matter. I have raw sienna, raw umber, the Sennelier natural tint, ultra marine violet, titanium white, Van Dyke brown, and ivory black. And that's what we're going to start with. I may end up adding some uh, yellow ochre to the mix. Uh, here we are today. We're working on inside, and I have my um, Edge Pro gear paint book and I've got over here we have a little bit of Gamsol, a little bit of linseed oil and our brushes over here and this is what we're going to start with and we have good light in here today so let's see what happens. So I'm starting out by just using a lot of paint thinner and a little bit of uh, Michael Harding's magenta paint and I'm sketching if you will where my piglets are going now um, I will concentrate more on the where the dark values are but I just have to get a kind of a just a, a sketch just to get an idea where everything's going so that's what I'm doing here Because I like to keep my cadmium red nice and clean, I kind of plop that down where I'm putting the ears on the piglet. And then I'm using just a little bit of the Sennelier Natural Tint um, to do the dark values. And again, I'm very, being very, very light with the amount of paint I'm using. So it's, it's really a lot of paint thinner. But I'm starting to get a shape here. And I'm, I'm putting a little bit of white paint down because I have a lot of bright areas where the light hits these little piglets' faces. And I'm wanting to warm it up. So I'm, I'm being a little bit um, exaggerating. I'm exaggerating a little bit on the warmth of the color on the front of this animal's face because um, I, it's almost like I have to see it. It's what I do to just make sure that um, I establish the blocks of color. Since I've established where my light source is coming from, I have definite, a definite cool side to each pig and a warm side to the pig where the light's hitting it. So I'm, I'm really you know, just trying to get in the shapes. I've suggested where an eye is going and where the ears are going and that little piggy snout and all that good stuff. Now they are going to be in some hay, so I'm just going to use uh, a little bit of a raw, um, it's a 
it's a raw sienna and a yellow ochre mix where I'm just suggesting where the straw is going to go. And you'll see, I'll actually bring out this little pig's bottom out a little bit more closer to the side and to the edge, but I'm just kind of suggesting where everything's going. And uh, I kind of like the little pig's butt. I'm, I, if, if there was any species of animal that I think has a cute little butt, it's a baby piglet. Sorry, I had to say it because uh, I got to play, I say play, I got to work with him when I was in college. Oh, the snow. Now this is just the beginning of the snow and it was just kind of kind of setting in, but it was making creating some wonderful light to work by. And I'm just working in my in my home today and it's actually in the uh, dining room. <laughs> I have a studio upstairs, but I'm not even using it. Okay, so you see I'm putting in a little bit more detail and you're starting to actually see the pig's forms. Now my pig in the background, the one I'm working on now, it's going to be the one with the least amount of detail. It's almost like a backdrop for the other piglets. And you can definitely see that cool pinkness. There is a, um, there is a warm pink that I'm achieving by using a lot of the cadmium red with white. And I also have a cool pink, which is a lot of the magenta. And I also have, you know, where I'm really, really wanting it to cool down and blew it up a little bit. I'm using the ultramarine violet, but yep. The, four, the little pigs are starting to take form. By little I'm starting to create a little bit more detail and I really want to take advantage of the cadmium that's in here so I'm, I'm adding a little bit more cad in some areas and brightening it up in others um, you know piglets even have a very coarse hair 
pigs in general have very coarse hair. As a matter of fact, I'm often using their hair when I'm painting, doing paintings. I use a lot of boar hair bristle brushes, but that coarse hair, I want to create that texture. And, um, and so I will be going a lot more impasto with paint as I, as I progress through the piece. But meanwhile, I'm just playing with these ears because I love, love, love these pink ears and these pink noses of these piglets. And you'll see it's starting to get a little bit more detail. You're starting to recognize the fact that these are forms and each one of these forms, all, albeit somewhat abstract in that you're just seeing these masses of color are actually representational and taking form and you're starting to see pigs. So putting the little wrinkles in the snout, that's detail and that's fun. To achieve that cool gray that I'm using on the cool side of the pigs, I'm using a little bit of King's Blue mixed with a little bit of burnt sienna and titanium white. And it makes a very nice blue gray. And that's what um, you can see on the side of the piglet's face. Um, you can see that nice cool, cool gray. And that's going to give me a backdrop to actually add the lighter, coarser white hairs on top. So I'm putting in that coolness right there. You see it going in. And what's interesting is when you're playing with a, an array of whites, these little white piglets, right? They're pink, but there's a lot of colors in there. Um, I'm even using a lot of, just a kind of a gray green in some areas. And I think that's so much fun is how light is played upon these little piglets' bodies. Now I'm creating, creating the arm and the, the curves and wrinkles in the elbow and arm of this little piglet and they are adorable when they're they're all bundled up sleeping together like this and the snow continues to fall it's so pretty and we so seldom have a good snow in East Tennessee it's kind of fun <music> all know how I love my rosemary brushes but this particular brush I'm using right now is I call them red tips they're affectionately known as red tips in my studio with my students but it's a, what I usually recommend my students get and it's a um, creative mark power krill uh, synthetic boar bristle brush it's one of their um, it happens to be a uh, a very nice synthetic boar that is it's 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 quite durable very inexpensive, and you can get them from Jerry's Artorama. This little brush happens to be a, a filbert, and it's doing a really good job. I needed it to be a little bit stronger and coarse because I'm starting to add some of the coarseness of the hair in the piglet's face and back. Um, so this little brush is doing, doing a great job. And since I was painting from home, um, I only brought a few brushes home with me, so from the studio. 
So I this was one that I grabbed and it's doing a great job. So yeah, you can you can check out those brushes from Jerry's Artorama. They make really wonderful the, the Power Krill uh, synthetic brushes are wonderful. Um, that's what I'm using here. So I'm actually just kind of forming the ear, putting the light pinks and the cool pinks in. Uh, I'm using, where I'm doing the warm pinks, I am using the Cad Red, and I'm mixing a little bit of Burnt Sienna in with it. And then of course I have the Magenta and a little bit of um, the Ultramarine Violet for the cool parts of the ear. And I'm starting to add some more hairs and you know some of the shadows that's in the piglet shoulder area and um, I, I have to give it a backdrop so I can put the light hairs on top of it so you see I'm going a little coarse with these with these strokes and then I go back in and put some light hairs so that's what I'm doing here and I am using my little sword brush and you know how this is this is a rosemary um, ivory sword or dagger actually it's a dagger brush and it's great for creating hairs whether you're doing long whiskers or doing little short pig hairs but for just doing fur and hair you can't beat a good dagger brush you can see I'm using some of these green grays that I've created too and I'm creating the green grays by using yellow ochre and a little bit of um, Kings blue and white it's making a really nice gray very little black was actually used in this. It was main, mainly used to create different grays. So when I needed to do a little shading, um, I was using a little ivory black. And it's getting, you know, closer and closer. Now that I'm actually work, you know, I, I'm, I've got the pigs and the shapes established, I am putting the detail in. Of course, the pig in the back is gonna have a little bit less detail than the middle pig, and then of course the pig in the foreground. So um, I have to be careful not to do equal amounts of uh, detail, but they are pretty close in proximity. They're all laying on top of each other. So I can't neglect the fact that there will be detail in this little pig back in the background, but I needed to really, um, my brain has, that's how my brain works. I have to work from the back to the foreground, so. Doing a little bit of the ear detail here and getting it in. Once I have established my piglet in the back, I'm going to my middle piglet. And there's a lot of white on this side of the piglets. Um, it's where the light is hitting it. So I've got to really um, create the whites here and trying to keep some of the little bristly hairs soft. And I am still using that little power krill, that red tip brush is what's doing the job now. So I put some of the paint down with the dagger or the sword brush and the, or I guess it was a dagger brush, and I'm smoothing it out just a little bit. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm using this brush to do a lot of the actual application of the white paint. If I need to go a little impasto, since we are doing a la prima work today, I could put the paint down with one brush and then use another brush like the sword brush to do a little finessing when I need to. So creating the form of the actual tail um, is what I'm trying to do here. And I'm, I'm, I'm creating some, you know, the, the hair has a little bit of volume and weight to it. So I'm going quite heavy, very impasto with a lot of this white paint. And I'm, I had neglected to put a good under, a, a cool underpainting on some of the parts of this piglet's back. So I'm, I'm doing that now. I'm actually putting a little, I'm playing with the different shades and hues and tints of all these um, grays and pinks in this piglet. And of course, <laughs> these piglets must be um, under a week old because this particular piglet, as we can see, has not been neutered yet. <laughs>
now that I feel pretty good about the middle piglet, I'm going into our piglet in the foreground and doing a little bit more detail. And again, um, softening you know the his little shoulder blade there, and making sure that the fur is rolling in, you know, correctly. So you know that hair, like I said, it's very coarse, and I want to make sure that it's that it's believable. You know, I want this to look like a this little piglet's just snoozing and the light's catching his hair in some areas and it looks, you know, he just looks like he's a sunny little piglet. And uh, forgive my camera angles. Obviously I came home without my proper equipment to do this. And so yeah, you're seeing a lot of my wrist, but hopefully you're able to see past my wrist at what I'm actually painting. And I am using the, um, the sword or the dagger brush to do this coarse hair. And you can see the way I'm laying this hair in. I need to have that, that darker blue shining through. And so I'm actually, because that's the cool side of the pig, I'm going in with a cool white. So I, that blue that I mixed earlier that I was telling you about, I'm actually just adding a little white to it so I can start laying, layering up the hair. So it may look like I'm going in with white, but it's like a light green and uh, in some areas and then putting in some of the darker um, under under hairs underneath the piglet creating the volume and the shapes and you know folks you've probably heard me say it before but I do squint a lot intentionally when I'm painting just so I can see the light I can see the light better and obviously since I am getting close to the end I'm flipping my uh, substrate which happens to be a gessoed panel and I flip the substrate so I can make my hand work more efficiently while I lay in the hairs because it's important that you lay the hair in the direction that it grows and so that's why I had to flip it and, and it and you can see why it's important because it's actually detail when you're doing that brush work like this you are creating a lot of detail and I'm trying to hit the top portions of the piglet's face where it's the lightest and ideally, once this is dry, I may go back on it. I'm gonna be very honest with you. I may go back and hit it again with some whiter whites in some areas. But for the, for the sake of the video, I think you're getting an idea of how I would go about doing an a la prima pig. And um, you're seeing that you know, it does, even though it is a la prima, I am still layer layering up the paint, but when you're working wet on wet like this, it can be difficult, at least for me, to really make that effective brightness of the hair that I, that I want to be able to achieve. But it's, it's actually working out pretty well, so I, I really can't complain. And uh, yeah, I'm having fun with this. Now for some last minute straw and we're getting pretty much close to the end and um, I'm using the yellow ochre and I'm um, cooling it down with a little bit of the natural tint by Sennelier and adding a uh, white and I'm also using a titanium buff color which again cooled down I don't want it to be too yellow in some you know all the straw being that yellow and it's making believable straw here and we'll be adding some white to it and we'll be done folks I think you know I really like how this has turned out 
and it was a nice fun painting to do on a snowy day. And here you see the finished piece and I really had fun with it and I hope you did too. And here's our completed piece. Now you can see we've got, you know, we've got faces of some pigs and we have bottoms of other pigs and shoulders of other pigs. But basically you can see that this was using all sorts of hues of pink. And I, uh, I really had fun with this because it wasn't, you know, I, I felt like it was a, this one was a bit of a stress reliever and that I was really more concerned about um, temperature and value here, less about the actual color. Now I did, as you saw in the beginning when I showed you the palette, I did have an array of color down, but um, you know, of course, cadmium being my hot pink side and using um, magenta as my cool pink side, <clears throat> I was able to play off of those, basically those colors. And if you don't have the Sennelier natural tint, get it. It's it's a wonderful color for toning. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a transparent color. So it's nice to be able to mix into other colors to pull them down a little bit and to, to gray them down. And I used quite a bit of that, of course, of a lot of titanium white. As you saw, I did quite a few um, refreshing of the palette to get enough titanium white to complete the piece. As it is pink, we are tinting. So this this was fun, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed today's painting. And if you did enjoy it, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing and uh, ring that bell so you'll know when the next video comes around. So again, thank you so much for joining me today and uh, my little snow day. <laughs> It was kind of fun. So thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.